and if you care to join me, um, by all means do so. Amazing grace, how sweet the song that saved a wretch like me. Stoned. 
Saul takes leading, a leading role in ravaging the, in the church. And this persecution scatters the community, and fear becomes the rule of the day. The passage we hear from this morning tells us of Saul seeking out the dispersed followers of the way. The way referring to those who are followers of Jesus. We may be quick to call them Christians, however, Christianity was not termed until the second century. The individuals who followed the way still considered themselves to be a part of the Jewish community. A man of great power and authority was brought to his knees by a flash of light and a voice identified as coming from Jesus, who you are persecuting. Ironically, Saul finds himself being led meekly into the city of Damascus and going without food and water for three days posed little threat to the followers of the way. What a precarious position <coughs> Saul found himself in. Ananias, one of the disciples in Damascus, had his own experience with a vision and a voice, and it was not all that favorable, especially when Jesus asks him to lay hands on Saul. Donald Davis describes it this way, quote, in case God has overlooked Saul's atrocities, Ananias takes occasion to issue a brief reminder. Ananias is not the last believer who has seen fit to keep God up to date, end quote. And yet through all of Ananias' writing <coughs> and pushback, he begrudgingly listens to Jesus. Go, for Saul is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. Seriously? Seriously? God even calls people like Saul and uses an ordinary follower of the way who demonstrates courage and faithfulness by following through with Jesus' vision. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may reign, regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. On this road to Damascus, both Saul and Ananias experienced a conversion, a conversion of thinking and acting and believing. Again, we have very little control of who God calls as an instrument of transformational grace and inclusion. Paul and Ananias' conversion is an active decree of accountability, for we have all been hypocrites at some point in our lives, we have all acted and believed in one way only to believe and act in another, therein making reconciliation even harder and breaking down the systems of injustice even harder. As faithful Easter people, knowing that resurrection happens, hoping beyond hope that hope even exists, it is hard to know which end is up and to even take on the challenge of God's faith that pushes us toward holy accountability and accountability that includes the likes of Saul and John Newton. God, sometimes you're not funny or maybe you are being really funny. We live our lives in circumstances that may be dramatic at moments but often are mostly everyday and common and God's amazing grace is present and sufficient in everyone. And even if it takes us some time, God is with us all the way in every moment of our lives. This is all the more reason then why the church still matters, the community of faith still matters, even in the midst of deep change and unknowing, even as we come out of a pandemic, the first in over a hundred years, there is great humility in knowing that when we gather as a community of faith to worship with each other in whispers and in shouts, have experienced a calling or maybe even a conversion, 
We have encountered a God that loves us unconditionally and welcomes us to this place to share our story, question our faith, and sustain us in the ebb and flow of life that carries us in directions we never thought possible. And when we least expect it, we sing a favorite song, we ask someone to join us for worship, we receive a plate of homemade Elaine cookies and talk with a friend. And in these seemingly ordinary moments, God may be calling. And if Saul, Ananias, and John Newton can be called and moved into action in living out their call, so can we. And the words then of John Newton, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace have brought me safe as far, and grace will lead me home. Amen. For our ministry,